بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنا دكتور إياد حسن الروبي يرولج كونسلتنت أند أسيستنت بروفيسور أت إسلامك فاكولتي أوف ميديسين توداي ويل ديسكاس فيري فيري إمبورتانت توبيك ذات إيز يوروني تراك إكتراكت كالكولاي أور ستونز واي إت إز إمبورتانت بيكوز إت إز بيليف ذات any person which he or she got uh, urinary tract stone, especially calcium oxalate stone, ten percent of these will get another stone within one year. And it is expected or thought and fif that fifty percent can get another stone within the next ten years. Uh, for this reason it is a common disease and here in Gaza also it is commonly used uh, pathology uh, men's or men affected more three times more than female patients or persons why because it is thought testosterone is uh, predisposing to more calcium oxalate stone production and it is believed that females is producing more citrate than male and we know citrate and magnesium is doing inhibitory effect for forming uh, the stones uh, age wise it is more common between 20 to 50 years of age uh, there is different factors, intrinsic and extrinsic factors that can affect formation of the stones. From the intrinsic factors, genetics is very important, actually. Uh, in the cases like uh, familiar renal tubular acidosis, uh, cysteine urea stones, it is very important. Uh, factor the genetics uh, the extrinsic factors is uh, like uh, uh, climate it is more common in hot climates uh, another extrinsic factor is the uh, water or the volume of intakes the amount of in fluids intake uh, the person which is drinking less or having or taking less uh, fluids they can they can form more stones than the people which it is or they are which they are taking more fluids uh, occupation is it important yes it is important it is more common disease in construction workers which they are working in hot uh, climates especially in the uh, gulf area actually we used to see a lot of workers which they used to get the stone disease diet yes it is very important patients or persons which they are consuming more uh, protein diet or protein intakes also they can get more uh, stone disease uh, we have uh, different types of stone uh, as a construction uh, we have calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate stones. We have stovite stones or infection stones, uric acid stones, and cysteine stones. If we look to this uh, list of stone stones, we can expect that around 85, 80 to 85 percent of these stones can be radio opaque stones. Radio opaque stones, and it will give us benefit in the in detecting or in in, in uh, deciding about the modality for the, uh, diagnosing this stone there is another red stones like ammonium acid urate stones trimeterine stones and denavir stones what is the denavir in denavir you know it is the antiviral uh, drug that is used in uh, HIV in AIDS patients and just for uh, your knowledge this kind of uh, stones the endenavir stones 
will not be seen in CT scan, in non-contrast CT scan. Uh, most or all the stones can be included. Uric acid stones it is seen and we can diagnose it easily by doing non-contrast CT scan. Uh, but the navier stone also will not be seen as high burdens in the non-contrast CT scan. Uh, there is some uh, predisposing uh, diseases or structural kidney diseases that can uh, predispose for forming the stones uh, like medullary sponge kidney, polycystic kidney disease, horseshoe kidney, pelvioretic uh, junction obstruction. Why? Because it can cause more stasis in the urine and this will cause more precipitation of the uh, crystals that will form the stones. Actually, we'll discuss some of these uh, in details in the pathophysiology uh, uh, stone of pathophysiology of forming stone stones lecture. Uh, you, I need you to know that often no underlying cause can be found. Uh, if we'll discuss the stones from clinical point of view, uh, presentation usually patient can come with renal colic. Usually the colic will be sharp uh, and it will be in the flank, iliocostal area. Iliac -costal area. Uh, episodes of severe pain last the 20 to 60 minutes. And the pain will be the location of pain. Of pain will be depend or, or will depends on location of the stones. Why stone can cause pain? Because you know, when the uh, stone migrate from the kidney to the ureter, it will cause obstruction. The obstruction will cause more hyper peristalsis uh, movement will cause retaining of urine, high pressured kidney, distension of the renal capsule and it will cause renal colic. Uh, in upper urinary tract or in upper ureteric stones usually pain will radiate laterally around the abdomen and it will radiate also to the uh, testis or to the that side of the scrotum and to the the in the females to the labials. One stone in the mid ureter it will be in the mid abdomen or lateral flank and abdominal region that it can be sometimes uh, confuse the clinician to diagnose it as sometimes as for example if it is in the right side as appendicitis. Uh, when it is in the lower ureter, usually these patients can come with irritative voiding symptoms like frequency, urgency, uh, other than uh, pain. Hematuria also, 90% of patients with renal colic will come with hematuria within the first day of pain and it will be became less in the next days. Nausea vomiting will also be signs of uh, uh, symptoms of the renal colic. Uh, sometimes patients can come with uh, complications of, of, uh, of stone disease like for example infection in the cases of obstructed infected kidney that patients can, can come with high fever. In this slides you can see here the stack horn stones. Usually it is being infected stones, the white stones. And what kind of complications that as we told you, some stones can do obstruction and <coughs> Uh, can cause fever in some cases if there is any infections. How we can diagnose the stone? 
before <coughs> going for the details uh, as you are doing in all subspecialties in uh, medicine you will start with history physical examination lab investigation and then images history will go for detailed history as I mentioned before uh, the pain nature of pain look site of pain location of pain time of pain aggravating factors relieving factors radiating pain uh, associated some uh, urine symptoms like irritative or obstructive symptoms uh, the volume of the output is very important in cases of urine, of single kidneys or bilateral obstruction it is very important fever is very important uh, after getting a detailed uh, history you will do physical examination usually you will find tenderness in the costovertebral angle and uh, in the, uh, the uh, lower abdomen sometimes also you can have tenderness uh, if we'll ask for go for the next step which is lab investigation usually are starting to to ask for simple urine routine examination uh, what we can see in the urine you can see as I mentioned before uh, blood in the urine hematuria we can have some uh, crystals that it can uh, show us or give us an idea about the uh, type of the stone which we can will find in the future when we'll do the images uh, sometimes you will find some infection in the urine uh, do uh, we ask for renal function test creatinine urea uric acid usually when you are dealing with a patient with the stone disease in uh, emergency department usually you, we, we are not asking for renal function test in this first presentation but if in the uh, second or third presentation you need to uh, ask for renal function test uh, or if the patient have another uh, serious symptoms like uh, anuria, oliguria, fever. In that time, you will ask for renal function test and you will ask for CBC also. Uh, uh, we have here in this slide uh, the indication of metabolic workup for stone disease. I will leave this for the end of this lecture, maybe because uh, we are not asking for detailed metabolic stone evaluation uh, uh, in all patients uh, only in the, the, some special conditions uh, I believe this is more advanced for you or more subspeciality that we can uh, discuss it later uh, but if you will if you I can give you an idea about metabolic workup Usually we are doing 24 hours urine collection and we will measure calcium phosphate, uric acid, oxalate, citrate, sodium and uh, urine pH two times actually we are doing urine pH we are asking for renal function test, calcium level in the blood uh, parathyroid hormone, vitamin D and uric acid uh, if, we'll, if we finish the lab investigation will start to do uh, work up uh, imaging for actually uh, will diagnose it uh, properly uh, in before they used to do uh, ultrasound and QX ray to diagnose renal stones especially but if I will tell you an uh, board exam question which uh, in the American Neurologic Association uh, what is the sensitivity of diagnosing renal stones in with ultrasound renal stones uh, not the electric stone the, uh, it is only the sensitivity only 50 percent sensitivity only 50 percent imagine that 50 percent will be positive 50 percent will be negative 
For this reason, the ultrasound is not uh, so sensitive in diagnosing uh, renal and uh, especially also ureteric stones because of the colonic gases which can obscure the stone. Uh, as I told you, the ultrasound before, because in the era of uh, not having the CT scans, uh, they used to do ultrasound and QB X-ray together. And still in the poor countries, or some European countries actually, they are still using the ultrasound with the QB X-ray. Uh, ultrasound is good in children and in pregnant ladies. Uh, what we can see most of the time, most of the time we can f see the effect of the presence of the stone in the ureter or dislodging the ureter of the, the stone in the ureter. Uh, the effect over on the kidney that it can cause dilatation in the collecting system. Uh, by ultrasound, we can easily see the hydronephrosis that it can be as a result of uh, a stone in the ureter. And believe me, most of the reports which is they are coming from the, rad the radiology department, uh, if we'll do ultrasound, they are mentioning exactly as I mentioned to you that there is hydronephrosis that it can be as a result of a stone in the ureter. Uh, whenever we are talking about the ultrasound, uh, there is disadvantages for ultra, uh, for ultrasound. As I told you, maybe miss, not maybe, most of the time, it will miss the stones. Uh, most of the time, a patient needs to be, to have full bladder when you will send to the radiology department to uh, uh, measure or to do the ultrasound. Stone size usually, if it is seen also, it will not be accurate. And actually the dilatation of the kidney uh, can take hours. And if the patient come earlier, sometimes you will not or they will not appreciate or see or notice the uh, hydronephrosis. X-ray, plain X-ray, uh, maybe in the beginning of this lecture I told you around 85% of uh, renal or urinary tract stones is radiopaque stones. That meaning we can see it in the uh, QV X-ray, uh, but there is 15 to 20% is radiolucent stone or are, are, are radiolucent stones that you will not see it in the QB X-ray. Cysteine, uh, calcium oxalate, struvite stones usually it can be radiopaque for this reason we can diagnose it. Uh, radiolucent stones will not see it. Sometimes small stones, very small stones will not be uh, seen. Uh, sometimes the stones will be in the level of transverse, transverse processes, vertebral transverse processes or iliac bones that maybe because that uh, the bone also opaque that you maybe to, it is difficult to uh, pick it or find it. Uh, the right side. I recently I have one patient in my department in neurology uh, the uh, the doctor the uncle doctor admitted the case as a case of right renal two centimeters stone and he kept the patient and PO preparing him or prepared him and they prepared him for surgery the next day when I came in the morning in the round I found the patient ready for surgery but I stopped my team from shifting the patient to uh, OR and asked them to do non contrast CT scan QV CT scan and believe me it was strange that this came as gallbladder stone not the renal stone think that if you 
take the talk the patient to the OR uh, and put a stent or do your ultroscope and you will not find a stone or if it is discovered later on that th this patient doesn't have a stone at all in the urinary tract it is very yani, actually upsetting uh, uh, condition for this season we are not depending on the key weeks ray and ultrasound for diagnosing the stones if the patient sometimes some condition if the CT scan is not available actually we can do uh, ultrasound with cubic x-ray for initial diagnosing the stones but uh, my advice not to operate not to, t to decide about surgery or endoscopic surgery with only or depending only on ultrasound and a uh, cubic x-ray uh, IVP is also actually uh, rarely used in this days for the, in a case of uh, stone disease uh, because as I told you maybe I will uh, will discuss uh, after some times the CT scan uh, replace the IVP because it can give good anatomical uh, informations about the urinary tract but not functional the IVB is good for giving functional information uh, about your tract uh, as you can see in this uh, slide there is dilatation in the left ureter and we see, can see tortuous ureter actually that meaning there is a stone in the distal or obstruction in the distal ureter it looks like there is a stone in the vasical junction in the uh, other uh, uh, x-ray we can also see dilated left ureter and dilated pelvic calicial system due to mostly uh, also distal ureteric stone uh, CT scan as I told you it is the gold standard or coming in the top of modalities in the diagnosing stone because sensitivity it is more than 99% uh, give as I told you just now it is giving to you good information about the anatomy uh, if we used to do with the contrast and actually we're not asking CT scan with, I, with IV contrast for diagnosing stones except if we need to know or to take an idea about the function but in uh, emergency cases or situations we are asking for non-contrast CT scan or we call it as QB CT scan QB CT scan uh, to it can give you very good details about the, the urinary tract the dilatation mild moderate or severe in the pelvic cell system and it can give you very good information about the site and the size of the stone uh, if it is in the upper ureter middle ureter or lower ureter because it will affect the modality of the treatment as i will let you know in the uh, last some slides uh, it will give you also an information about the consistency or the density of the stone density of the stone whenever the density is be being more the that meaning the stone is more dense the stone more uh, going with more having more calcium or phosphate in, 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 the, in it uh, for this is being more uh, radio opaque going to radio opaque other than radio lucent uh, the density are measuring in CT scan with Hounsfield unit uh, Hounsfield unit for example if we have stone with density of uh, 400 Hounsfield unit that meaning this stone will be radiolucent stone if we will do uh, QB X-ray uh, and uh, as I told you it will affect the modality of the treatment you, which you will select uh, if we have a stone with 1000 household unit that meaning it is for sure will be radio opaque stone and the consistency of the stone will be uh, or 
it will be going with radio calcium oxalate stone other than uh, or cysteine stone yani it will be more harder stone uh, in this slide as you can see there is lower uretric stone this is a bladder and this is a stone in lower ureter uh, uh, the other uh, x-ray or CT scan slide also there is another electric left electric stone here hydro dilated pelvis here we can find around mild to moderate hydronephrosis in the kidney uh, dilated pelvic uh, system Uh, MRI actually we are not using MRI for diagnosing uh, urinary tract stones ex except in special conditions uh, we are using the uh, MR MRU or MRI in diagnosing uh, stones in uh, pregnant ladies sometimes uh, as you know the first choice of in pregnant ladies is the, is the ultrasound only but sometimes being confused you because you know uh, ladies or pregnant ladies can get physiologic hydronephrosis in the right side uh, in some conditions we are not being sure that this lazy let this lady has uh, physiologic hydronephrosis or the colic because of this hydronephrosis or because of the stone there uh, and especially if this lady is in early trimesters, I mean in the first trimester, it is difficult to put, for example, a stent for her and keep the stent, for example, six months or more till it will be it will deliver. For this reason, sometimes what we used to do MRU to uh, be sure that she has a stone other than having a physiologic hydrophosis, for example. <coughs> How we can treat the stones? Uh, as we told, uh, there is different. Actually, uh, this lecture I used to give uh, case scenarios to let you think, uh, uh, future doctors, about the uh, how you manage these stones. To give scenarios in the beginning of the, this lecture and. I let you do the decision about the modality for treatment in the end of this lecture but because we are doing ice spring uh, video sessions I will try to uh, give you the, the modality of treatment in easier way uh, first of all you will uh, if you have any patient coming to you and you diagnose him or her as uh, renal stone or urinary stone you will give uh, first of all analgesia you will ask for as I told you the lab investigation and you reach that there is a stone uh, as I mentioned just now the size of the stone is very important for deciding about the treatment uh, if you know that this the stone is less than five millimeter that yani four or less millimeter this is 75 percent of these stones which is inside in the ureter will pass spontaneously 75 of patients with stones less than four millimeter and less they will they will pass the stone spontaneously for this reason if this patient doesn't have serious problems like high fever or persistent pain that is not responding to analgesia just you will give symptomatic treatment as i, as I will uh, tell you uh, analgesia stone expulsive treatment alpha blockers that it will affect the lower third of the ureter like the tamsulacin uh, the drug which are we are using in uh, prostatic hyperplasia benign prostatic hyperplasia as it is found that it is affecting also the f the lower one third of the ureter, making uh, relaxation of the smooth muscle, that it will uh, help in expulsing the stone outside the urinary tract. 
If you have a stone one centimeter, it is unlikely to pass spontaneously. For this reason, you will try to put a plan for this patient. Uh, if location is it important? Yes, it is important. If the stone it is, is still it is in the upper ureter, uh, that meaning uh, this stone still needs a lot of time to come down, or to will, the patient will suffer a lot till it will come down. Uh, but if it is in the lower ureter, it can give you uh, a clue that maybe this patient will, pa will pass this stone. Hydration is important in the first, uh, yani as a first uh, step in treating or managing these kind of patients. You will let the patient to drink or to consume, consume a lot of uh, fluids. Uh, non steroid anti inflammatory is very important or analgesia because it is uh, to, uh, uh, giving analgesia for the pain and it is uh, anti inflammatory. The edema around the stone in the ureter also can be uh, affected positively, that it will help the stone to, to come uh, down. There is special conditions. Yani if I will ask you in a different way, do you, do we use to admit all K all patients with the stone disease? No. If patients coming with signs of fever, obstructed infected kidney, we can admit. Uh, if uh, persistent pain that it is not responding to analgi analgesia, you will admit the patient to the hospital for proper management. If the patient coming with uh, recurrent visits to accident and emergency also will admit him. A patient coming with anuria or oliguria also you will admit and manage. Uh, if the stone is uh, large, for example more than one centimeter and, and pa the patient in severe pain, also you can admit and just uh, at, uh, as I, you will see in the next slides we can put just a stent and relieve his pain. Uh, if patient has a uh, single kidney and uh, with stone disease, also he needs uh, urgent management of this stone. Patients which uh, they have uh, bilateral uh, uh, ureteric stones, yani bilateral obstruction also is an indication for admission. Multiplicity, more than one stone in the ureter also can be uh, an indication for uh, admission. Is the occupation also can be uh, can be an indication for admission? Sometimes, uh, when I was uh, abroad or outside uh, Gaza, uh, we got many times pilots, for example, pilots that was with the stones, ureteric stones. This pilots you need to do proper and urgent and uh, fast management for these uh, persons because imagine or think if they will get renal colic while while they are in the flights in the sky it will be very dangerous. For this reason you need to do proper management fastly. Uh, Sometimes we are giving, as I told you, say, in some, uh, if we have, for example, renal stone, renal stone with uh, diagnosed by CT scan that one patient have uh, two centimeter renal stone, let's say. Uh, if it is in the pelvis and causing severe pain, in that time you need to do proper management, urgent management for this patient, at least to put a stent to relieve the if uh, uh, if uh, this stone doesn't cause pain, for example, this two centimeter stone uh, is in one calyx in the kidney, and radiolucent stone, that meaning mostly it is uric acid stone, just we can give urinary alkalinizer. Uh, we have in the market sodium potassium citrate that it can dissolve this stone. I have some patients with four centimeter stones that it is dissolved uh, completely within around three to four months with 
urinary and canalizer only. Uh, usually, I'm instructing patients to take low sodium uh, diet and to increase the intake of the fluids. Uh, if we are suspecting this is provided stones, magnesium, ammonium, phosphate, MAP, we are uh, as a previation, magnesium, ammonium, and phosphate. Uh, usually this kind of stones it needs to be removed because infection it is infection stone and it is for your uh, knowledge this is more common in females why because you know females can get urinary tract infection more than female males uh, you need to give antibiotics and do proper management for this kind of stones uh, uh, cysteine stones also high fluid uh, diet and it is needs uh, urinary alkalinization. Uh, what we can have also, what we have another modalities, what another modalities for diagnosing stones, we have as well extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. It is shock wave uh, that it is directed toward the stones, and uh, we can uh, do fragmentation for these stones extracorporally. It is very effective, especially if the stone is not so hard. Yani, for example, if it is radio opaque, but the household unit is around uh, 800-900, usually it is fragmented easily. Uh, but if it is 1,500 uh, Hounsfield unit, that meaning it is very hard stone, it is unlikely, but you need to to try to give because the effect, the effect of the machine can make difference between machine to another machine. For this reason, you will uh, give the patient uh, the chance to uh, treat his stone without intervention, less invasive to be. Uh, for example, if you have a patient with renal stone, one centimeter in uh, any calyx in the kidney, you can send him for as well lithotripsy. If also you have one centimeter stone in the ureter, but no significant hydronephrosis, that no real obstruction in the kidney, and the patient is having mild pain or uh, pain that can be controlled easily with low dose of uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory or analgesia just you will we can send him for extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy the drawback of extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy that most of the time the stone can not be fragmented or disintegrated in one session usually we can do one or two or three sessions to uh, fragment this uh, uh, stone uh, uh, what else we have uh, if we need to do proper management for example for uh, ureteric stone or let's uh, start from down urethral stone patient can come with acute retention with the stone in the urethra uh, in these cases you can put for a catheter push the stone back and the next day we can shift these patients to the OR and doing something we call cystelothelopexy, fragmentation of the stone with stony crusher inside uh, the bladder and take the fragments out. Bladder stone same, if it is around two, two centimeter or less, also we can do cystelothelopexy or using the stony crusher or stone punch to fragment it inside the bladder and take it out. In some cases which we have larger stones in the bladder, we do some fragmentation to more smaller uh, fragments uh, by lithoclast and after that we can do cystelothelopexy. If the stone in the ureter, we have ureteroscopes, we have semi-rigid ureteroscope that we can go through the meatus, xenomenia meatus, urethra, bladder to the ureter and do stone disintegration and we have forcepsis to remove the fragments. How we can fragment these stones? We have actually four modalities for 
stone fragmentation or disintegration uh, we have before there is electrohydraulic uh, stone fragmentation uh, modality that it is uh, obsolete now that we are not using anymore uh, now in this days we have three options or three modalities to fragment the stone first one is the pneumatic which is doing like hammer effect over the stone that do disintegration and remove the pieces or the fragments with forceps we have pneumatic using uh, also shock waves to fragment the stones and this modality usually we are using uh, this modality in the renal stones because with ultrasound fragmentation modality we have suction also that is sucking the small and tiny uh, fragments uh, in the we have also laser actually and lucky in a Shiva hospital we have the three modalities of stone fragmentation we have laser also laser the good thing in laser that it can be effective very effective in very harder or hard stones uh, and the other very the other very important model yani specificity of this of laser using laser and fragmenting the stones is the uh, uh, the location we have here a uh, flexible ureteroscope that we can go through the natural way reaching the kidney up and doing stone disintegration inside the kidney and we are using laser here because the laser fibers is very tiny only it, it, uh, the ureteroscope can accommodate like this fibers to go up and do disintegration in the uh, kidney the other very important thing in laser laser is not doing hammer effect not pushing the stones up in upper ureteric stones we can do f f disintegration with laser uh, without pushing the stone up or if we have the fear that this stone maybe can be migrated up to the kidney uh, in this in the stone instrumentation lecture I give you an idea about percutaneous nephrolithotomy uh, doing one centimeter incision in the uh, posterior axillary line and go to the kidney after doing puncture with uh, if you remember with a uh, needle putting it where dilata doing dilatation and going inside with the nephroscope over a sheet and do disintegration uh, fragmentation by ultrasound and sucking the stone if it is also eight nine ten centimeters stack on stone it is very good modality for treating the stone uh, in this days we are not using actually open surgery for you for stone disease yani over the last uh, many years i don't remember that i used uh, open surgery for uh, treating or managing a stone in the kidneys uh, because uh, we can treat the stones with different modalities as endurologic modalities as i mentioned that why to expose your patient to more uh, invasive surgery uh, laparoscopic in some countries uh, which they are, if, if they are expert in laparoscopic surgery if they can have stone in the perineum pelvis uh, or in the ureter they can do uh, ureterolithotomy uh, or uh, pl lithotomy and take laparoscopically and take the stone uh, out I hope uh, the stone you got the messages which I use, plan to give you uh, about the stone disease because I mentioned to you it is very important and common disease that you can face it uh, in your uh, life as a doctor uh, knowing that Really, I have also a pediatric patient, pediatric patient, pediatric patient uh, having stones. I have many children with uh, stone disease that I used to do for them 
stenting, putting as a stents, uh, doing lithotripsy, extracorporeal shock wave, uh, percutaneous nephrolithotomy, uh, and we are managing the stones also. Thank you.